shoes worn by religious people, the white, the orange, why does it matter? Why, why do you, I mean, if you've taken official vows of initiation, okay, you wear orange. But even then, why? Why does it matter? And if you haven't, why do so many people on a spiritual path, why do they wear white? And does it matter? Why not jeans and a t-shirt? Why not shorts and a tank top? Why, I mean, wh why does it matter? And the reason that it matters is twofold. First of all, for yourself. We are not our clothes, of course. We're not even the body beneath the clothes. And when we cover our bodies with something, it's giving a message about us, right? Everybody has their own style. You take 10 people into a department store, they're going to choose 10 different things. 10 people stand in front of a mirror wearing the same sweater. They're going to have 10 different reactions. One person would say, oh, God, this is so beautiful. It makes me look great. Somebody else would say, oh, God, it's horrible. It makes me look so fat or so skinny. Somebody else is going to say, this is really ugly. Somebody else says, I love it. We have different styles. And our, our style says... It says something about us. That's why it matters to people. That's why the marketing industry of clothes is a billion dollar industry. If nobody paid attention to what you wear, if what you wore didn't impact the wearer, it wouldn't be such a big industry. So it matters to us, but why does it matter to us? Let's take it deeper. And it matters because it makes a statement about who you are. If I showed up for satsang in a really short, tight black mini skirt and a pair of heels, now, it wouldn't, it wouldn't change the soul, the spirit, the energy. It's just I'm dressing my body. But two things would happen. You'd feel very differently about me. Some might feel better, some might feel worse, some might just feel different. But you'd absolutely feel differently. But even more importantly, I would feel differently. Because when I put on a really small, tight black mini skirt and a pair of heels, it's giving a message to me about who I am about how I identify. I'll, I'll share a, a personal story on this. December of 1999, I had been in India for three years at that time. I officially took sannyas in June of 2000. So December of 99, I was still officially not sannyasi and officially could wear anything I wanted to wear. I used to wear mostly just white. When I used to go back to America to visit my family, Pooja Swamiji would always emphasize to me, always encourage, wear whatever they want you to wear. Don't worry about it. It's a big enough change. It's a big enough jolt that you've moved from America to India. At least when you go back, if they want you to dress normally, dress normally. And so when I would be there, I would usually wear things like really long skirts, typically white or pink or yellow, you know, kind of pastel-y colored, light, long skirts and loose tops. And December of 1999, my parents decided to throw a Christmas party. I was home and they were going to throw a party. So, wonderful, great, they're going to have all their friends at home. So the day of the party, my mom comes home, and I hadn't even thought about what I was going to wear. I had just assumed probably a sari. I had some nice white saris I had brought in from India. And my mom comes home, and she's ecstatic. She says, I have found the most perfect dress for you to wear. And she says, come, 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 look. 
And we go into her room and she pulls this cardboard box out of a very well-known designer shop bag. And she pulls it out and she opens it up and she says, you're going to love it. It's perfect. It covers everything. Right? So it covers your it covers you all the way down to the ankles. It covers you to the wrists. It's perfect. You're gonna love it. So she opens up the box and pulls out a black <laughs> evening dress, right? I mean it's it's December, it's LA evening wear, of course it's black. And she says, Try it on, try it on, you're gonna love it, it's perfect. So I put it on, trying to do as much deep breathing as I can, and chanting my mantra, and, and you know all of the techniques that we we use when we're in difficult situations, situations that are putting our spirituality into a situation of what feels like non-spirituality but we're trying to respond to the moment with as much love and as much compassion and as much presence because of course spirituality is just being present as possible. So I'm doing all my deep breathing, I'm chanting my mantra, I put it on. And on, on one hand she's right, it does cover everything. On the other hand, it really was letter of the law instead of spirit of the law because it looked like it had been painted on me. It was skin tight, literally. I mean, it was like, it was a, basically a black skin tight leotard, the whole top of it, all the way down to below my waist. And then it dropped to the floor. And my mom is looking at me in it saying, oh, it's perfect. You're beautiful. It's, oh God, this is wonderful. It's so beautiful. And I'm chanting my mantra in my mind, and I'm saying to myself, it's only the body, it's not the soul. It's only the body, it's not the soul. It's only the body, it's not the soul. And suddenly, I, I couldn't do it anymore. I've never been a very good, um, not just liar, but I've never been a very good pretender. I've always been someone whose heart was really on her sleeve, which in this case was very literal. And no matter how much of my month that I chanted, no matter how much I tried to tell myself it was just my body, not my soul, I burst into tears. And my mother says, what is the problem? This is, it's perfect, it covers everything. What is the problem? And I said to my mom, I said, mom, this dress is a lie. It's a lie about who I am and what my life is. And if you would like to go downstairs to the party and to tell your friends a lie about who your daughter is and what she does, that's really okay with me. I have no attachment to going to this party. I will be very happy to stay in my room, to meditate, to work, to read. But if you want me to go to the party, I have to speak the truth. And I cannot speak the truth and wear a lie. And so she says, fine, wear a sari. And that was officially the last conversation that we ever had about what I was going to wear anywhere. But I, I share the story because, yes, on the one hand, it shouldn't matter. On the one hand, I should be able to prance in here in a mini skirt and heels and, you know, it shouldn't matter to you or to me. But we know that it does. There was something about a skin-tight black dress, no matter how much I wanted to make my mom happy, no matter how much I wanted to be spiritually above the reaction I was having. As I said, I hadn't taken any vows. Yet, I was officially allowed to wear whatever I wanted. My guru was encouraging me to wear whatever they wanted me to wear. But there was something so incongruent about 
what the clothes said that I couldn't do it. It felt like I was shouting lies literally out of the pores of my body. And so one of the reasons that spiritual people, even those who haven't taken official vows, choose to wear white is it's, it's a statement. It's a statement to the world about who I am. And there's something very, very deeply internally satisfying about looking in a mirror or looking down and feeling a congruence of thought and action, of feeling a congruence of who you are. Not the soul, of course, because the soul is the soul in whatever it wears, but who you are in this, in this incarnation. The, the little me, the little self. Because, of course, the capital S self is the same for all of us from, you know, any walk of life. Ramakrishna Paramahansa used to bow down in pranam on the floor to prostitutes because he could see the Divine Mother in them. So, so the soul is the soul, regardless of what we wear, regardless of what we do. But there's also the lowercase s self, the, the identity, which, yeah, in the highest, highest level, we should be so unidentified with it that we could wear absolutely anything and it just wouldn't matter. But until we get to that point, being able to look down and feel a sense of, yes, this is incongruence. What I think, what my priorities are, what my values are, and what I'm portraying to the world. If I pranced in here in a little mini skirt and a pair of heels, I could certainly blame you for getting the wrong impression. I could blame you for not feeling quite as, as spiritually inspired, as interested in sitting and listening to satsang. I could blame you. But the truth is that I actually would have the same reaction to myself, to myself. Not that there's anything wrong with any type of clothing, but simply in terms of living a life in which we are committed to transcending the calls of the body, committed to transcending identification with the body, making choices that are about the body, making choices that call attention to the body, making choices that are about an attractiveness of the body. Again, not bad at all, not wrong at all, but just not, not the values, not the choices of those who have chosen to live lives of celibacy, who have chosen to live lives of renunciation, who have chosen to live lives transcending the calls of the body. And so that's, that's where I think it matters. For how we feel and for the energetic messages that we, that we give to the world.